This video is a continuation from the last video when I rolled out the slabs of clay and placed them onto the plastic covered paper plates. This is um, day two now where I have already removed them from the paper plates that were covered with bags. These are leather hard and these are ready for cleaning. The first part that I'm going to clean will be the outer edge. Now, when you are looking at your plate, I always recommend that you get your head directly over the plate and really look at it from up above and make sure that the rim looks around. As I look at it, I am looking to see if I have any imperfections of maybe an area that is sticking out. Um, if, if it's not quite symmetrical and one side is sticking out more than another, I will want to sure form that off. Um, the sure forms we have used previously in our semester, um, sure forms, or in the case of this, I'm sorry, this is a mud tools shredder. Uh, sure form is the Stanley name, and this shredder is by mud tools. Um, the links for these tools are available on the Google Doc in my video description. Also, you could follow me on my Amazon influencer store because I have all of these sorts of things linked in the um, on Amazon as well. So I start off by really looking at and making sure that it looks round. You may certainly use a turntable as you do this. I'm just holding it in my hand um, so I can look at it regularly side to side looking all the way around. When it looks like it's even, I'm looking for the width of the flange to look even. I'm looking to see if I have any imperfections of areas that are sticking out. Then I'm going to uh, smooth out this outer edge. Currently the outer edge has a rather sharp corner on it and I really want to smooth it. There are a couple different ways you could do that. One would be you could use a notched rib. So I keep old cards, um, old plastic cards, whether they are room keys or uh, this was an old coupon card. Um, and I cut notches, okay? And I do have a video on how I did this if you wanted to see. Um, and the notch, I will uh, make it gradually go down the edge until I can tell that I'm fully into the depth of the notch. As you do this, you uh, want to be cautious. If your clay is not fully leather hard, if it's still a little bit squishy, don't try this. Because if you uh, try this when your clay is a little bit on the squishy side, it's very easy to dent it. But I am fully uh, leather hard. I don't have any plasticity about this. It's not really plastic at all. And here I'm using a turntable in order to sure form and then also use the notched rib on the edge. A turntable will make it much easier than holding it, so I highly recommend a turntable. Going to finish the edge of this one the same way. On this one, again, once the edge looks uniform, then I want to round it. Now in the case of this one, I'm going to use a metal rib rather than the notched rib, okay? Some people have issue with the notched rib, so I wanna show the metal rib. Now, and here on the back edge, I'm just trying to remove a little bit of the excess clay where it was kind of sticking down when I initially cut it. I'm knocking off that edge so I can more easily round the entire outer edge. I've now taken the little extra flange that kind of stuck uh, it stuck down on the back of it. I took that off. Now I'm ready to round this edge, just like I did with the, um, with the notch rib, but in the case of this, I'm just going to hand sculpt it. So I'm just rounding the edge with a metal rib. So as I look at it on the side here, I'm rounding that. Hopefully, hopefully that's visible. All right, once I have sure formed the edge even and I have rounded the edge, it doesn't matter if you use a notch strip or if you use a little metal scraper, but then what I'm going to do is round this edge by using my fingers 
and a little bit of water. So by dipping my fingers in, and this is very similar to maybe what we did on our pinch cups, I'm going to dip my fingers in the water and then I'm going to smooth and my fingers are kind of acting a little bit like a rib. By smoothing and compressing, I wanna make sure that the sure-form marks are gone. The, um, the grog marks are gone if the grog maybe scraped it or scratched it. So this is much smoother on the very rim. After I do that, I am going to make sure that it is flat Okay, on the rim, I'm going to just kind of press it down. And while I have it upside down, I might as well go ahead and write my name on it. Now, with my edges smoothed and I made sure that it's flat, remember how I uh, pressed it on the table? Um, I wanna make sure that it's not bowed or anything. Then I'm ready to go ahead and start my design. I do have templates of varying sizes. If you would like to put, say, a border on yours and you want it to be a nice round uh, um, design in there with a, a border, you could certainly use a template that I have to do that. I'm just going to start off by lightly drawing it on. You could use a pencil, you could use a needle tool, you could use any sort of design to lay out your plan. I'm just using one of these Kemper wood tools. If you do make a slight mistake, like right there I have a slight mistake, I don't know if you can see it, um, I can easily just uh, fix that with a paintbrush in a little while. So students, if you don't feel comfortable um, doing something that's kind of a freehand design, and maybe you wanted to have something that was a little bit more precise, and you wanted to print out a photograph of something, uh, you could bring that photograph in and place it on top of the clay, and then transfer the design, somewhat as if uh, you were carving a pumpkin. Sometimes uh, people will put a drawing on top of a pumpkin, and they will, um, transfer, say with a needle tool, that helps them to get uh, a little bit more precision. Now, once you have carved and you have all this debris on there, um, what I usually do is take a dry paintbrush and I just dust it off. Be careful not to dust it on the floor, of course. This is the sort of thing that will want to very carefully sweep up off the table. All right, so I've dusted it off. You can see I have everything laid out, and it's a very shallow, shallow line on there. Now at this point, this needs to be dark, carved more deeply. When you are glazing it, you need to have the carving deep enough that you can squeeze your underglaze into your lines. So when I begin to carve, I will carve it with the, um, with the little triangle tip tool, the, uh, the Kemper tool, again, link will be in the Google Doc and in my Amazon uh, storefront. Now, when I'm carving, it's deep enough. It's probably about the thickness of pencil lead, like it goes as deep as a uh, a pencil lead and when I say pencil lead I'm talking like a wooden pencil not like a tiny little mechanical pencil lead okay so I'm going to carefully cut these lines out and notice how I'm positioning my hand and I'm supporting my hand I don't want to press down on the side of this uh, the tendency that students have is sometimes they're just not focused and they rest their hand on the side and the weight of their hand will crack it. So be careful of that. You really don't want to crack. Again, thickness is key on these lines. If you're very, very shallow with your carving, it's much more difficult to do the glazing on it. Notice that every time I dust 
the debris off, I actually clean the spot before I put the plate back down because I don't want to set the plate in the chunky debris or it gets all over the back. Um, now that I have carved away the butterfly, now I'm going to do that border. And again, no pressure at all on the border as I'm carving this. Notice that I'm kind of setting my hand directly in the center of the plate and actually kind of holding my hand rather stationary and rotating the plate. That helps to get the circle a little bit more even. Double check your width of your lines and your depth. Make sure that they look pretty uniform. All right, so I gave it another good dusting. And then the last step for cleaning is taking a paintbrush with water. And I just wanna clean up any of the lines. If I have burrs on any of the carving, I wanna clean that up. When you use the triangle tipped tool, it really leaves you pretty clean lines. So there's minimal cleanup that I actually need to do. If you need to go back in there and lift out anything, you certainly can at this point, such as the end of the lines, I wanna make sure that they are maybe connecting to the border. If small brush marks are visible, you won't see them after it's glazed. So this looks pretty good. I do have a wide variety of drafting templates in my room. You could certainly use those if you wanted to create a pattern that had precision or a design that had precision. So say for instance, on here, I wanted some nice straight edges. Use those flexible straight edges to get the design that you want to. And then I also have some flexible curves and I also have some French curves. If you wanted to use a flexible curve, they're pretty cool. They have wire in them, so they, they hold their shape kind of nicely. And you can just gently set that on the plate and you can create whatever sort of design that you wanted to. Again, remember, I'm not putting pressure on the rim. I'm not supporting my hand on the rim. Here I'm just correcting a slip that I had with my tool. I added a little water and then I'm just compressing over. So I had uh, an extra mark that I didn't mean to show up. Um, and uh, just by using a little water and compressing over it, you can get rid of the mark. Okay, so here we have both of my plates are carved and cleaned. Remember that just using a series of tools like the small little triangle tipped uh, Kemper tool, very helpful. Um, a dry brush to dust the debris out, a wet brush to help clean the carving at the end, and then the little pointy tool that's uh, kind of pointed like a pencil to pick out anything else that's left in your lines. Uh, you can carve with a ball stylus tool if you would like, but they do require a bit more cleaning effort than using the triangle tip tool. If you have your design planned out before you come in, it will help you a lot. Usually I would say that people can finish carving and cleaning within two days. I'm going to flip them over so they're on the rims and the rims are flat. Uh, again, be careful if you have gone beyond the leather hard stage, if they're bone, do bone dry, don't try this because if you try to press it flat, you could crack it. You always wanna be careful to keep the rims flat without putting undue pressure on them or it could snap.